Since we all have a little bit more time on our hands these days, we're going to talk about something that we as cyclists enjoy very much, and that's our environment. And in this case, we're going to take a break and talk about environmental art. It's a unique video. Let's take a look. The origin of casting storm drains and manhole covers started in New York City in the late 1990s. As a school kid growing up in New York, we would take rubbings of New York City manhole covers. So uh, growing up and then becoming an artist, um, I wanted to uh, somehow grab the feeling of New York visually as an artist. I was walking one day and I stopped at a beautiful manhole cover and I said to myself, hmm, what would happen if I pour plaster into the manhole cover? I actually had the time one day and, and uh, I went out with a, a guy that I worked with with plaster and we uh, took our first casting. And when I pulled the hard plaster off of the manhole cover, it had all of the grease and had some of the gravel and it had some sand and it had the stuff that I couldn't clean out of the manhole cover in the casting. And I looked at it and at that moment, I realized that this is a type of a fossil, that it's a timepiece. It's a moment in time in New York City. So at that point, I started to collect different aggregates, sand, metal, all of the stuff from the city, cigarette butts, razor blades, and I used them to decorate the, uh, these, these castings. I moved out to the New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware River area. I walked across the storm drain that are on the curbs of the road, and there was this fish in the storm drain cover. In the storm drain cover, mm -hmm. and it said, "Dump no waste, drain some waterway." And I had become an environmental artist over the course of time, and my knowledge about casting manhole covers automatically click. I need to make a casting of these storm drain covers, and that is where this story really begins. I met Judy. She worked on a project for me that I was doing, a plaster project that I was sending out to San Francisco. And we started working together. And from that point on, I showed her how to work with the materials and how to uh, cast these pieces. And then Judy took it from there. And I can't even begin to tell you how far she pushed the art form and how far she pushed me and how far she pushed herself to create an amazing body of work that we can keep doing for a long, long time create the design with all of the things that we have found while we're doing environmental cleanups of rivers, the Delaware River, other waterways, beaches. Um, Our prerequisite is not to buy any material. Everything that we find has to be something that's going into the waste stream. So either we find it on the street or in the, in the river or on the river banks or at the ocean or the beaches or there are people that now know of our work and they say, you know, I got a drawer full of old jewelry, a drawer full of old watches, a drawer full of old anything. Yeah, things that they were going to throw, throw away anyway. And, they, and they're so done with it. Yeah. yeah, whether it's a, a, a friend of ours was a stained glass worker. He had a bin of broken glass that he had no use for. He was going to throw it out. So we, we get that. So. It's nice after you work hard and collect stuff and get known, we get people that are gonna throw things out. Things that are killing our society right now is a thing called e-waste. There's so much planned obsolescence that everyone's buying a new phone, a new computer, a new laptop, a new uh, uh, pad, and keyboards are going left and right, and, and, they, and there's no way to actually get rid of these things because they're made out of such nasty <laughs> material. Um, so they're, they, they become a real problem in landfill worldwide. We have friends that know what we're doing and they're more than willing to donate their old computers to us versus going into a horrible landfill where it's going to you know, really destroy the environment. 
you have to envision what you want the end piece to look like on the wall as far as how it's going to hang so you have to engineer it each step you're doing you're engineering towards a final product towards the final piece Being an artist is great, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be, but to have a cause and a goal and a, that goes with the art makes it a little bit deeper and richer. Um, and the environment, as a, I've been an environmental artist <laughs> for 25, 30 years, and all of a sudden in today's world, it's it, where everyone's waking up to the fact that there's no going back. We have to do something about our environment. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, something that um, has legs, as they say, in, in the art world. It's, this is not a passing fancy. This is not a trend. This is a very serious art movement that uh, we're involved in. And uh, I believe the materials and the method that I've managed to put together uh, is done rarely in history. And I hope that it's an art form that that, has, that takes off and, and influences others.